Putting it mildly, 2021 was a weird year in cinema for audiences and studios alike. And so, of course, some behind-the-scenes stories that are coming out now, well, they are truly bizarre. So let's take a look at them. As I'm Jules, this is WhatCulture.com, and these are 10 ridiculous stories behind 2021 movies. Number 10. Nicotine Poisoning and Needing a Wash – The Power of the Dog Unsurprisingly, the race for acting awards at the Oscars can be insanely competitive, so much so that many an actor has gone full method in order to immerse themselves in a role completely. But sometimes they take it too far, with hilarious results for anyone who isn't them. And this time, it's the turn of Benedict Cumberbatch. In The Power of the Dog, he plays Phil Burbank, a cowboy who rarely washes, loves to smoke, and hates Kirsten Dunst's character. So, good old Benedict did pretty much the same. In a recent interview, he said that he wanted to have a layer of stink on him, to the point where he got embarrassed by the cleaner. No doubt making his smell worse, Cumberbatch also talked about the constant stream of filterless cigarettes, which, as he said, had to be perfectly rolled with one hand. As a result, the smoking got so bad that it actually gave him nicotine poisoning on three separate occasions. To complete the final part of this method acting trifecta, both actors actively avoided each other for pretty much the entire shoot. While Dunst said it was because of the hatred between their characters, she'll have a tough time convincing us that the cigarettes and B.O. weren't also at play. Number 9. Clash of the Titan Movie Sets – Dune while starkly different stories in their execution, there's no denying that Star Wars and Dune look kind of similar on the surface. On first look, both sci-fi juggernauts focus on a chosen one tasked with saving countless planets from a maniacal leader's tyranny. However, no resemblance was quite as literal as both productions running into each other in the middle of the desert. As Dune production designer Patrice Vermette explained, he was location scouting in Jordan when he spotted a black SUV. He had a hunch that his friend Paul Inglis was in that car. He was the prime suspect as he previously worked with Villeneuve on Blade Runner 2049 before moving on to Star Wars The Rise of Skywalker, which was also in production at the time, and it turns out he was right. This insane coincidence quickly worried both teams, as neither wanted to face accusations of copying from the other. So bizarrely, a meeting was held between everyone involved to sort this out. Both productions agreed to film in different parts of the same desert, and somehow they all managed to make it all work, with audiences being none the wiser. Number 8. Butler's Accidental Rampage – Cop Shop Now we all have our off days. For some, it comes at the expense of an extra cup of coffee or two. For others, the effects can be a tad more extreme. Take action movie veteran Jared Butler's off day shooting Cop Shop, for example, because, of course, he wanted to do all of his character's own stunts, and so started his day fighting a stunt guy who ended up getting in the way of some lockers, as you do. While, according to the star, it was just so much blood coming out, they carried on. Unfortunately, as fate would have it, he wasn't actually the only person to split their head open that day. The second injury occurred while dodging one of Butler's attacks, causing an abrupt coming together between his head and a pillar. Butler capped off his unintentional assault on the cop shop production by accidentally shooting co-star Ryan O'Nan with a stun gun. To be fair, he got pretty unlucky here as he managed to hit the tiny area where his skin was actually exposed. Still, the carnage led to Butler claiming that he had to think about retiring. Okay, we know this is bad, Jared, but let's not do anything hasty. Number 7. Marital Jeopardy – A Quiet Place Part 2 Making a film can be exhausting, both physically and mentally. Shooting long hours for months in less-than-ideal environments is tough enough, and being away from family for that time only adds to that. So you'd think having your wife with you for that process would make things easier, right? Especially if it's the second time around. Well, John Krasinski did as well, but it wasn't long before it turned stressful. While explaining the stunt in the opening sequence of A Quiet Place Part 2 to his wife, Emily Blunt, it became clear to her just how risky it was. It had a bus going 40 miles an hour directly into Blunt's character, which is meant to come within a hair's breadth of her moving car. After offering to practice the stunt first, Blunt declined, wanting to jump into filming the shot straight away. And that's what they did. Incredibly, she nailed it on the first take, meaning that those are her actual reactions in the final cut. Now, while it all worked out in the end, John was taken aback by how real it all got, later remarking, I think I put my marriage on the line when I put her in that car. Number 6. Chaotic Cast Chemistry – Jungle Cruise Sometimes a film comes along where the cast gets on like a house on fire. While it permeates on screen massively, it truly shines when the actors are in interviews together. Take the ones Emily Blunt, Dwayne Johnson, and Jack Whitehall gave while promoting Jungle Cruise. Here, they wasted no time explaining all the little things they did to enjoy themselves while filming. It appears Blunt was actually the instigator of many of these fun tidbits. Namely, she left inappropriate messages around Johnson's gym and got people across the 
the production to call him Toots. Whitehall also had his fair share, from making sound effects during a kissing scene between the two leads to teaming up with Blunt to send Johnson patronizing stunt instructions in video form. Dwayne was also a great sport in putting up with the antics of his co-stars, and even got the last laugh when they had to get back to reshoot a fight scene because Whitehall's punching was deemed to be too soft to be believable. Number 5. Mortified at the Mud Bath, House of Gucci Actors face many challenges while shooting a film, from acting against green screens and green people to staying composed in the harshest of environments. Their education reflects this, being always taught to expect the unexpected. However, Salma Hayek and Lady Gaga probably didn't think their training would also prove so integral during a mud bath scene in House of Gucci. As Hayek described to James Corden, her first time in a mud bath came while filming a scene with Lady Gaga. To her surprise, Hayek had a great struggle in making herself sink underneath the surface to prevent herself from being exposed. Exposed. She fails miserably and the mud instead starts moving her around and before she had a chance to focus, one of her legs began to rise out of the bath. Weirdly enough, director Ridley Scott didn't cut it though. This forced Lady Gaga to try her best to stay in the scene, even though Hayek can't even remember her lines at this point. Utterly mortified at her ordeal, she described her experience as the most challenging scene I've ever done. And given the way that she told it, we don't blame her. Number 4. Peel and Tarantino Make a Request Last Night in Soho For many fans of Edgar Wright's new film, the scene transporting us back to the 1960s for the first time is among its highlights. One detail that helped make the sequence memorable was looking up to a larger-than-life Thunderball marquee, cementing the time and place we now inhabit. However, fans might be surprised to hear just how close the poster came to not being in the final cut. The original plan was to use the Thunderball marquee, which they put up in London during the filming. Later on, though, Wright instructed the VFX team to digitally switch Thunderball with the Fantastic Voyage, as he thought it would fit in with the film's themes better. While the change caused an issue with the year in which the film would be taking place, what really changed his mind was esteemed directors Quentin Tarantino and Jordan Peele. Showing them an early version of the trailer, Wright's main takeaway from their feedback was their love of the Thunderball marquee. These exchanges prompted a somewhat embarrassed Wright to return to the VFX people, asking them to revert it back. This just goes to show that sometimes you just need to go with your gut instinct. Number 3. An Ironically Horrifying Bee Infestation – Candyman Creepy stories from the production of horror films are nothing new. Hair-raising behind-the-scenes tales have been told from as early as the 1960s. Now, though, it's time to add another, thanks to this year's incarnation of Candyman, because who oh boy, was it a big one. The story harkens back to an infamous scene from the 1992 original Candyman in which protagonist Tony Todd had live bees in his mouth. In the early stages of making the sequel, director Nia DaCosta was with her a line producer when a sudden sound prompted them to look outside. With all of the windows now also open, they saw a huge swarm of bees that just seemed to come out of nowhere. Panicking, they rushed around, closing the windows before looking at each other in disbelief at the eerie omen they'd just witnessed. After the encounter, both of them kept finding dead bees around the house, adding another level of creepiness to the proceedings. Every now and again, life has a funny way of making weird things happen just to keep you on edge. Number 2. 8,400 Gallons of Coca-Cola – No Time to Die For decades now, entries into the Bond franchise have been rather grandiose affairs. Now, of course, what really hikes up the cost of these productions are the extensive action set pieces, as no expenses are spared to make them as good as they can possibly be. While there are many intricacies to these sequences that studios need to splurge money on, you probably wouldn't expect one of them to be mass quantities of soft drink. But alas, the No Time to Die production spent £55,000 on Coca-Cola cola alone. In it, Daniel Craig's stunt double had to hit a ramp 25 feet high at 60 miles per hour. Going up the ramp also allowed him to get enough height to clear a wall and land on the cobbles on the other side. As the cobbles can be slippery, the crew had a trick up their sleeve to ensure a safe landing. This is where the Coca-Cola came in, as once it dries, the drink made the surface sticky. Yes, it's totally justified, but you wouldn't envy the person who had to lug it all around the set without context. And number 1. Holland's Brotherly Revenge – Spider-Man No Way Home Now, we all like messing with our siblings, so it's rather reassuring to know that that doesn't change even when you're the star of 2021's highest-grossing film, as Tom Holland would exemplify. It all started when Tom had a particularly harrowing day while shooting an action scene, where he had to spend the entirety of it upside down. Whinging about it to his family, he was quickly shot down by his brother Harry, telling him to just get on with it, which Tom took personally. 
Tom's opportunity for payback came soon after, as a spot opened up for Harry to appear in the film. Failing to miss a beat, he ensured that Harry got the gig, but also ensured that the scene involved him being upside down for the entirety of it. His plan worked to a T, with Harry's experience shooting the stunt making him eat his own words. The real icing on the cake, though, was that Harry's scene was removed from the finished version of No Way Home, and while it still may be released as a deleted scene, it renders Harry's ordeal more or less just for nothing. Nice one, Tom. And there we go, my friends. Those were 10 ridiculous stories behind 2021 movies. I hope that you enjoyed that, and please let me know what you thought about it down in the comments section below. As always, I've been Jules. You can go follow me over on Twitter at RetroJ with a zero, or you can swing by Live and Let's Dice, where I do all of my Warhammer battle reports and model making and other stuff like that, as well as my streaming outside of work. It'd be great to see you over there. But before I go, I just want to say one thing, my friend, because you are a massive ledge and you deserve the best things in life, like love, happiness, and success. So treat yourself with that love and respect that you goddamn well deserve. As always, I've been Jules, you have been awesome, never forget that, and I'll speak to you soon. Bye.